This video shows the technique for making a ribbon fiber reinforced periodontal splint. Ribbon first became popular as a material for making periodontal splints and it is still recognized as the industry standard for this application. These splints are easy to make, strong, aesthetic, and exceptionally durable. Please note that this video is intended to provide an overview of the procedure and that it is not intended to be used in lieu of the instructions that are included with the ribbon kit. Measure the area where the ribbon will be placed using the dead soft tin foil provided in the ribbon kit. Wax dental floss can also be used as well. A small amount of tacky viscosity composite can be used on every other tooth to help hold the template in position. Adapt the tin foil or dental floss to the teeth as you would adapt the ribbon. Cut or mark the end of the template to indicate the length that will be needed to cut the ribbon. You may want to err on the side of cutting too much rather than cutting too little as you can trim the excess ribbon before curing with the special ribbon scissors. Cut open the plastic packaging and use cotton pliers to extract the ribbon. Cut the ribbon with the special ribbon scissors. Ribbon is made from the same ultra high molecular weight polyethylene fibers used to make bulletproof vests and normal scissors will not cut it cleanly. Reseal the ribbon by folding over the end of the packaging and securing it with the paper clip. This will help to maintain ribbon's indefinite shelf life. Clean the teeth and prepare the teeth for bonding. Clean, acid etch the teeth, and apply the bonding adhesive using your standard bonding technique and materials. Please note, since there is no clinical evidence supporting the use of self-etching resins for this type of retentive bonding, we do not recommend using self-etching resins for this procedure. For periodontally mobile teeth, it will make the procedure easier if we stabilize the teeth using a polyvinyl siloxane impression material in the gingival embrasures. This will also prevent composite from intruding into these spaces and will make cleanup easier. Apply a thin layer of a soft filled composite to the teeth. We don't recommend using a flowable composite for this step because flowables tend to lack the tackiness to hold the ribbon in position prior to curing. Ribbon Incorporated has a specially formulated filled composite resin designed for bonding the ribbon to the teeth. It has a viscosity that is between a flowable composite and a filled restorative composite. This video shows the technique using the ribbon securing composite. If you do not have the ribbon securing composite, we have a list of some of the composite resins from major manufacturers that we recommend for this step on our website. If using a paste viscosity composite, place a thin bead of composite on the teeth and then with an instrument, flatten it to mimic the contours of the teeth. Flattening the composite will make the adaptation easier and reduce the amount of composite that needs to be displaced when placing the ribbon. Try to make this layer approximately half a millimeter thick. Whether you use the ribbon securing composite or a paste viscosity composite, make sure that the composite is placed in a continuous bead. It is important that the composite is placed within the interproximal contacts. Do not cure yet. Wet the ribbon with a fourth generation unfilled adhesive bonding resin. After the ribbon is wetted with the bonding resin, you can now touch it with your fingers or powder free latex gloves. Do not wet the ribbon with a bonding resin that contains a dentin primer or self etching component. If you do not have a suitable resin already in your office, Ribbon Incorporated offers the ribbon wetting resin, which is a standard fourth generation unfilled bonding resin. Starting at one end of the periodontal splint, Press the ribbon into the composite resin that was previously applied to the teeth. You can use your fingers or an instrument to press it through the composite. Starting at one end, press the ribbon into the composite resin that was previously applied to the teeth. Use your fingers or instruments to press it through the composite closely against the tooth surface. Remember, the thinner the bond line is, the better the results, so try to displace as much composite as possible. This will not only minimize bulk and aid in patient comfort, but it will also maximize the laminate effect. For periodontal splints, cracks begin at the contacts. Therefore, try to adapt the ribbon as deep within the interproximal contacts as possible. Like packing retraction cord, adapt the ribbon from the free unadapted end. Hold the adapted section of the ribbon against the surface of the tooth and use a thin tipped instrument to tuck the ribbon deep into the interproximal contact. While still holding the adapted ribbon with your finger or an instrument, gently adapt the ribbon against the lingual surface of the next tooth. Hold the ribbon against the tooth with your finger and using a thin tipped instrument, tuck the ribbon into the next interproximal contact. 
Ribbond has virtually no memory, so it should not spring out of position after placement into the composite. Work your way from tooth to adjacent tooth until you've gone from one end to the other. Ribbon's manageability will allow it to easily follow the curvature of the arch and to follow the contours of the teeth. If the ribbon piece is too long, cut the excess with the special ribbon scissors prior to curing. After placement, using the same thin-tipped instrument, carefully remove the excess composite resin that was displaced during the adaptation of the ribbon. Move the instrument parallel to the lengthwise orientation of the ribbon to avoid accidentally displacing the ribbon. Check the final placement of the ribbon, and after the removal of the excess composite, polymerize. For an extra coronal splint, paint a thin layer of flowable composite over the ribbon splint. Shortening the bristles of a micro brush will add more body to the brush. Do not use the ribbon securing composite for this layer. Polymerize each area for 5 seconds, just enough to prevent the composite from slumping. Paint another couple layers of flowable composite onto the splint. Try to make this covering layer as smooth as possible. As mentioned previously, Ribbond is made of the same fibers used to make bulletproof vests. Ribbond fibers do not polish well, and we want to avoid having to shape and polish the splint using rotary instruments. When you're satisfied with the composite covering layer, polymerize the splint thoroughly. Thank you.